Fail-sale electric vehicle. Fail-sale electric vehicles run on electricity generated by the fuel cells on board. Fuel cells combine oxygen and hydrogen and electricity is produced and the byproduct is water and heat. Fuel cells are much more efficient than most of the other types of energy converters as compared to IC engines and batteries also. The byproducts in the reaction of fuel cell are water and heat. And depending on the fuel source, very small amount of nitrogen oxide and other emissions are produced. So the byproducts are also not harmful and water and heat, they can be also utilized. Fuel cell powertrain minimizes noise and enhances the driving comfort. As compared with IC engines, and other energy sources, fuel cells are more expensive. Waste water vapor needs to be well managed and it can be another concern for foggy and misty places and that has to be managed. Hydrogen preparation, storage of the hydrogen, transportation of hydrogen and distribution of hydrogen are all important issues and they has need to be properly handled and considered. Working of fuel cell. The figure shows here the working of the fuel cell. You can see here at anode, the hydrogen, which is H2, is called as a fuel is circulated and there is a gas diffusion layer at this anode and cathode side. Also, there is a proton exchange membrane that mostly allows the ions to exchange and the electrons are passed to the external circuit that is the load. At the cathode, the oxygen or O2 from air, oxygen from the air can be passed to the cathode. And because of these chemical reactions into this hydrogen and oxygen, electrons are produced. And also there is the heat is produced and air and water vapors are also released. So as compared to other chemical reactions here, the byproducts are environment friendly that is water and heat so as a summary at the anode hydrogen gives up its electrons to the anode with the help of the catalyst the electrolyte membrane is designed to allow only hydrogen ions pass through at the cathode the hydrogen ions oxygen and electrons are bonded to form water that is h2o in this process, electrons flow from anode to cathode through the external circuit and thus producing the electricity. The most common used type of fuel cell is the proton exchange membrane fuel cell called as a PEMFC, that is PEM fuel cell, proton exchange membrane fuel cell. So in this figure, a proton exchange membrane fuel cell is shown. So there is a hydrogen input to the anode that is the electrode anode and that there is electrolytic membrane that is a proton exchange membrane so it will pass the hydrogen ions and electrons from the H2 that is a hydrogen they are released and here oxygen is entering to this cathode electrode cathode and the ions and this oxygen, they will form the H2O and electrons will be circulated. And the byproduct is the water and heat. So this is how the proton exchange membrane will be uh, providing the electricity. You can see the reactions here. H2, it will be provide two H plus ions and two electrons. And at cathode, O2, 
half O2 plus 2H plus and release of two electrons. So it will form H2O. So as seen, uh, we, have, we have seen the proton exchange membrane, fuel cell. The electrolyte is an 0.1 mm thick proton conducting plastic membrane coated with a platinum catalyst. At the anode, hydrogen gives up its electrons to the anode with the help of catalyst. The ele electrolyte membrane is designed to allow only hydrogen ions. At the cathode, the hydrogen ions, oxygen and electrons are bonded to form water. In this process, electrons flow from the anode to cathode through external load. The another type is alkaline fuel cell. So here, the major difference is the alkaline, which provides the OH minus ions, and these ions are passed through the electrolytic membrane. So here for alkaline fuel cells, alkaline electrolyte only allows hydroxide that is OH minus ions to pass through. At the anode, hydrogen combines with the hydroxide and generate water and electrons. At the cathode, oxygen, water and electrons are combined to create hydroxide. So here you can see choice H2 plus 4OH, they will produce 4H2O and 4 electrons. And at cathode, oxygen plus choice H2O plus 4 electrons, it will form 4OH minus ions, and the chemical reaction will take place. Here, a solid polymer fuel cell. SPFC stack is shown where the membranes and the anode and cathode plates are there and they are made compact and also there are plates are formed and hydrogen and oxygen can pass through this forming the fuel cell complete stack. The advantages of fuel cells are they are quite that is silent and involve few moving parts other than some fans or compressors to blow air into the device and hence no require much maintenance. They are modular. They can produce in the compact models so that several can be coupled together to increase the capacity of the system but can be mass manufactured to reduce the cost also. They exhibit a Increase in efficiency at low loads, unlike a heat engine, which normally only exhibits maximum efficiency around the design point or operating point for the device. Fuel cell electric vehicle powertrain. In this diagram, we can see the overall fuel cell powertrain, that is the fuel cell as a source into the vehicle. So here is the fuel cell. So fuel cell need the oxygen and hydrogen, which is provided from the fuel tank. That is the hydrogen tank. It goes to the fuel processor and then it will go to the fuel cell. Also, there is a controller that allows the fuel from the fuel processor. And also there is a thermal management system coupled to the controller. After the generator electricity will go through the converter. And again, it will go through the inverter to produce the suitable voltage levels required to the battery. And to charge the battery. And also the battery can discharge through the inverter and it will give supply to the electric machine that is a motor. And the motor will propel the wheels that is through the transmission that is the drive wheels and waste heat and water will be released after the thermal management. So this is the complete fuel cell, electric vehicle powertrain. And the important thing is the storage of the fuel, that is the hydrogen, pure hydrogen, is required in the fuel tank. Once it is exhausted, again it has to be refueled, that is hydrogen has to be refueled 
into the tank and then the vehicle can move. As seen, the primary components in the power train consist of fuel tank, fuel processor, a fuel cell as a primary energy source, a battery pack, an electric machine that is a motor, that has a traction motor and other components. The vehicle controller takes command signals from the accelerator pedal and the brake pedal, the speed signal, the fuel cell power signal and the battery signal and send the control signal to the fuel cell system. The power from the fuel cell and the battery pack combined to provide energy for the electric machine, which propels the vehicle through the transmission system. As seen in the figure, the fuel cell and battery pack can be combined and serve as the energy source. So battery is always used to charge it and it, along with the fuel cell, it will work. The fuel cells combine hydrogens stored in the fuel tank on board and oxygen extracted from the air to generate the electricity. The byproduct is water and heat. The onboard battery pack can be used to store the excess energy and regenerative braking energy. So the battery will support for storing the energy when it is excess and also regenerative braking energy during the braking of the vehicle. The key problems of this technology are hydrogen supply infrastructure development and onboard storage of the hydrogen. So suitable hydrogen refueling infrastructure is required and also we can have the onboard storage of the hydrogen. Fuel cell energy system with hydrogen reformer. Earlier we have seen the hydrogen is refueled into the tank. Now here we can see the hydrogen production with the reformer. So the fuel figure shows an alternative. The hydrogen used by the fuel cell can be generated on board from the methanol, ethanol, gasoline or diesel by using the reformer that is a hydrogen producing technique. So here itself on board, there is a facility to generate the hydrogen the vehicle. So it is a long life and low cost catalyst for the fuel conversion is required. The hydrogen generated needs to be purified and CO, uh, that is a poisonous gas from the most fuel cells need to be removed from the reform gas before being fed into the fuel cells. So here we can see this fuel cell. So there is a fuel tank. Then there is a reformer where air will be entered and carbon dioxide also removed. And after this, the hydrogen is produced. It is given to the fuel cell and the fuel cell will work uh, and chemical reaction will be there and it will produce the electricity air and water so electricity will be given to the battery pack which is excess or it can be given to the inverter drive the load when it is required so this is how there is an onboard system to produce the hydrogen it can be stored also and the fuel will work with the hydrogen reformer Fuel cells combined with other energy sources can have various combinations. So fuel cells combined with the battery pack as energy source, as we have seen in the earlier configuration, fuel cell and battery, they will work together. The fuel cell in this configuration is more like the range extender. And the battery is mostly supplying the energy to the power train. The another configuration is fuel cell combined with supercapacitor. The so fuel cell will work along with the supercapacitor. The supercapacitor has high specific power and can assist the fuel cell in providing the high power. So this high power will be useful to accelerate the vehicle or to provide the torque. In regenerative braking, peak power can be absorbed by the supercapacitor. So regenerative braking energy can be stored into the supercapacitor. 
the third configuration is fuel cell combined with flywheel so flywheel is another source the mechanical energy stored into the flywheel can be converted into electrical energy first and then combined with the energy from the fuel cell so here flywheel is again supporting for the working fuel cell and flywheel is the fourth configuration where flywheel can provide mechanical energy directly and propel the vehicle through mechanical transmission and fuel cell is also working there so here directly mechanical energy of the flywheel is given in the third type the mechanical energy of the flywheel is converted into electrical energy and then it is given to the vehicle and fuel cell is also supplying the electricity so there is a difference of final output which is mechanical one and which is the electrical one here we, we have we can see the configuration as discussed earlier the first configuration where fuel cell and battery is shown in the second configuration fuel cell and super capacitor is shown in the third configuration fuel cell and flywheel is shown where the flywheel is basically supplying input to the uh, to the vehicle and supplying here and the last configuration we can see the mechanical input is given by the flywheel directly to the differential and here flywheel is not giving mechanical input right directly but it is generating the electricity flywheel is generating electricity and that is given to the motor so flywheel is giving the electrical input and here flywheel is given directly the torque that is the mechanical input so this is the difference and various configurations are along with the fuel cell the challenges using the fuel cell for the electric vehicle the first one is the vehicle cost as fuel cell is a costly technology the vehicle cost is the one concern which is a challenge the second is getting hydrogen to the consumers so refueling for the hydrogen is required so getting the hydrogen infrastructure for the fuel cell vehicles is another challenge third one is fuel cell durability and reliability to maintain the fuel cell for a long energy and durable and also reliability has to be improved and that is one of the challenge and there should be a public education related to the fuel cell to make them more aware about the advantages the benefits of fuel cell and to use the fuel cell based electrical vehicles